These are the Magic Pro League standings at the end of the 2019 inaugural season of that Magic Pro League. Javier Dominguez sits atop the list with 201 mythic points, but he's not only atop the list, he's really dominating in a way that separates him clearly from the pack. In second place, Manguchi 154. In sixth place, Canister with 144. Javier with a towering 201. What is it that makes Javier Dominguez Javier Dominguez and the rest of us, well, not? There's too many things to nail down each and every way in which I'm not Javier Dominguez and you aren't. But I want to highlight one play today that demonstrates the type of play Javier's capable of, that he's capable of finding in a high-stakes, on-camera moment in one of the biggest tournaments of the year, Mythic Championship 7 from a few days ago. And I'm going to show you that play, walk through it, in order to shine a light on Javier's skill and the reason why so many people are saying this is the best player in the world right now. Let's take a look. Beatrice has uh, stuck to the game plan here. She just decided to run out the fires of invention. Not much else she can do about it, but there was a quench in hand for Javier. She knew it, you know, that it was going to get countered by something, but figured, well, I've just got to run through these. Now she's going to play her fifth land, though it is tapped. It's a Temple of Triumph. So we have another turn where she's not going to be doing anything and just has to pass the turn back. And now we're going to see Nightpack Ambusher hit the board, as you mentioned. So. You heard Marshall Sutcliffe there state that, you know, Beatrice doesn't have a play. You know, doesn't have a spell she can cast, doesn't have a target for Justice Strike, she's going to pass the turn, and what we're going to see Javier do is play Nightpack Ambusher. Not only is Nightpack Ambusher, you know, the only thing that Javier can cast in this spot, not only is this a natural play that kind of makes sense given that he's got four mana and this flash 4-4, four four, this whole thing about passing with counter spells up and playing Nightpack Ambusher is kind of what the deck was designed to do in the first place. If you're not familiar with Simic Flash, pause the video and take a look at the deck list. For anyone who is familiar with Simic Flash, you know that for Nightpack Ambusher, a bunch of counters main and side, a huge part of the game plan is passing with mana up, and should the opponent choose to do nothing or be unable to do anything, Javier will get to, do, whoever's playing Simic Flash will get to deploy a Nightpack Ambusher, get far ahead on board draw their card for their next turn, generate a wolf token, and pass with those same counter spells up. So, again, this is kind of what the deck was designed to do, and it's a play that nearly everyone, myself included, is likely to make. Let's see what Javier does. It will likely, if uh, Javier does play it, will likely immediately die to Justice Strike. Mm -hmm. He's actually considering not playing it, probably for that reason. Right, I, I think that there is, there is some thought of, okay, do I want to just not give uh, her the ability to use it? I, I re actually really, really like Javier doesn't play the Nightpack Ambusher. And if we take a look at the opposing list here, Just Guy Fire's list that plays three Justice Strike main, one on the sideboard, we can see this is a game three. So likely to have four Justice Strikes in the deck to deal with Nightpack Ambusher and cards like, you know, Hydroid Crasis, should those get in a position where they can block Cavaliers, etc. That being one of the main points of interaction here and the fact that Javier is ahead in the sense that he's kind of his deck's in the position it wants to be in there's no fires on the board opponent has five cards hasn't didn't have one to deploy this turn Javier looks at this situation and actually makes a read here a read meaning you know puts his opponent on justice strike and specifically Justice Strike. I mean, you know, Quench is theoretically possible as well, but, you know, Quench could be good later. I mean, you know, there's only one Quench in the deck, I think. So, you know, that's a factor, but primarily we're thinking about Justice Strike, or Javier was, and actually decides to forego all the advantage that would accrue in all the circumstances in which Beatrice doesn't have the Justice Strike in hand. All that is left on the table because... Javier said, you know, in this case, it's very likely my opponent does have Justice Strike. And I would rather play Nightback Ambusher in a turn or two after using the Gate or Mystical Dispute on, against a tapped out opponent. Guarantee that the Justice Strike, if it does get used, would cause a tempo loss in a future turn. And that there may be a Wolf or two on the table already. So Javier makes a play here that I think shows 
just how strong a player he is. It's not that this is guaranteed necessarily, you know, perfect play that nobody else would find it, that it's always going to be right, that this couldn't have backfired if the opponent didn't have justice strike. But look, the reality is most of us in this situation under these bright lights aren't even going to be thinking that that's an angle that's available. Javier not only spots it, he's correct. He he doesn't do it and goes on to, you know, top 8 this tournament after winning this match. But I just wanted to show you this play. I think this really demonstrates here, you know, the channel that we call Magic the Gathering for Advanced Players. We want to highlight the most advanced player in the world, again, by many accounts, Javier Dominguez. So, um, hope you enjoyed learning, you know, today something about what makes Javier's game so strong. One of the aspects is, even when you're decked in a situation where things are going really well, to take that extra moment, think about how to maximize these cards. If you look at this game state, right, if you really zoom out and you look at what's going on here, I mean, Javier is really playing a flash deck against an opponent playing a tap out deck. How do you punish the opponent? Well, most of us, we just, you know, hope to get ahead on tempo. There's actually a ton of decisions when you, when you play a flash deck at instant speed. And sometimes the decision is do nothing, waste my four mana, go against every heuristic that you're going to read about in articles that you read or trying to improve or that you'll see on this channel. All the heuristics about use your mana, get ahead on board when you can. Right? Don't don't let that mana go to waste and line up your cards to outmatch your opponent's cards simply by spending mana in spots that makes them react. Be on the front foot. Discarding all of those in favor of a play that's complex but situationally correct. If you like this type of content, please subscribe to the channel, Magic the Gathering for Advanced Players. Um, appreciate your time today.